Good afternoon and Swadikap once again. Today is Saturday, uh, April the 18th, 2020. As the spokesperson had mentioned, uh, worldwide we have now 2.2 million confirmed cases. And of course, we hope that the world and Thailand will soon turn the tide against COVID. First of all, uh, thank you to the general public for the cooperation in our fight against COVID. We do hope to turn the tide. We have so far managed, managed to contain the situation to a degree and keep the number of cases quite low. But however, we take this opportunity to repeat once again the message of the Center of the COVID Situation Administration, or CCSA, that we do need to keep our guard up, maintain our guard, or else we might see a further spread of COVID and an increase of the new infection cases in Thailand. Uh, yesterday evening uh, at 6 p.m., the Prime Minister gave a television address during which he informed the public of the government's, government's two principal priorities in this time of crisis. The first is, of course, the fight against COVID, and second is the assistance to all Thai people. He emphasized the inclusivity of the process of every sector, the cooperation from every sector, including especially the private sector, the public sector, academics, civil society, and the general public, the people at large, all of which have crucial roles to play. And he asked them to cooperate, to work together in solidarity in order to tackle the pandemic and its far-reaching impacts on the country's economy and society. The Prime Minister expressed the confidence that with everyone on board, Thailand will overcome any challenges that we are facing now and in the future. The center has been following and monitoring the events around the world. Uh, in the past few days, the spokesperson has mentioned about cases in various countries in Asia. Just to recap uh, some information we've been following in other countries. Uh, for example, in the Philippines, the lockdown has been ongoing since the middle of the month and is uh, valid until the end of this month. The president of the Philippines announced this on television. The arrests of 120,000 violations of uh, curfew, uh, most especially in terms of drinking alcohol and uh, assembling for gambling and cockfighting. So we can see that in other countries, uh, the situation is almost the same in Thailand where we have to keep guard and keep monitoring the various uh, violations. In the United States, of course, you would see in the news, there is a three-phase approach. The first one is uh, strictly prohibiting uh, people to go outside uh, buildings unless uh, necessary or congregating of over 10 persons. The second phase is uh, when it becomes more relaxed, uh, the, when the situation becomes more relaxed, uh, around 50 people uh, assembly would be uh, permitted and of course the reopening of transportation and phase three hopefully in the future when normal lives are resumed but of course with the highest control of health standards still in place so we just continue to monitor the news and events around the world uh, as a reflection of what other countries are doing as a learning process for us as well and thank you very much for the cooperation of the general public in all of the measures so far. For the general situation, the numbers in Thailand that we have, I have for today, we have 33 new confirmed cases, making the accumulated total 2,733. Yes, we have a slide on screen for you on this. The total number of recoveries and discharged is 1,787. This is an increase uh, different from, from, from yesterday in the past few days because there is, for today, around 98 new recoveries. So, recoveries. so it's very, a very nice number that we have here that there are almost uh, 100 recoveries uh, per day. Another number I highlight is about the new fatalities that we recorded. It is good news that today we have zero no recorded fatalities. The accumulated total of fatalities still remains 47. In ob observing the numbers, we found that Bangkok 
still remains the main location where the existing cases have been found in the most number, the, followed by the neighboring provinces and tourist provinces as well. In the general picture, the number of provinces that have no new cases in the past 14 days, we have 29 provinces now that have no new cases in the past 14 days. Yesterday, it was still only 27 provinces with no new cases in the past 14 days. For the enforcement side of this uh, situation, in terms of curfew, we have a total of 804 curfew violations, warnings 169, and charged in legal cases 635. It's uh, interesting to note, and the spokesperson mentioned this, is that we tallied the numbers during the Songkran Festival in the past, uh, the three days uh, earlier this week, in which the other years, the past years, we have dubbed the, the period as the seven days of uh, danger, Jet Wan Antarai. So we tallied the numbers and we found that the number of deaths, the death toll, decreased by 70%, meaning that in the past years during Songkran, we had around perhaps uh, 500, 300, 400, or 500 deaths during the seven days of danger. But this year during Songkran, we have only 150 deaths. And of course, because we are in a different situation, but it's, it is also very good to hear that there are not a high number uh, of fatalities during this period. The statistics for the last few days show that the central region continues to be the area where most of the violations have been found, top five, for violations are Nontaburi, Bangkok, Patum Thani, Samut Prakan, and Songkla. And as mentioned, Bangkok and neighboring provinces remain on the top 10 of the list of number of violations. And the number of violations correlated with the number of accumulated new cases of infection. You may notice that the number of warnings on violations is getting lower, it's uh, decreasing. That means that the authorities have taken very serious actions have received the good cooperation of the general public around the country. And considering that there is ample time for the public, for the people to get used to the curfew hours declared two weeks ago. So we here at the CCSA would like to continue to ask for your cooperation to comply with the rules and regulations which are aimed at controlling the situation and protecting the health and the, the very well-being of every Thai person and the residents of Thailand. Between the 18th to the 30th of April, we also tallied the number of uh, persons entering uh, Thailand in all uh, channels. So from the 18th to the 30th, around half, uh, half a month, we see that there will be around 1,984 uh, people entering Thailand. This is, of course, tallied according to the number of uh, prepared uh, flights or the number of uh, special requests needed uh, to enter Thailand uh, in terms of the groups that are allowed to enter Thailand. In the southern provinces in particular, that number is 1,604. So we are keeping a very close tab on the incoming number of persons uh, up until the end of the month. Turning to the scheduled repatriation of Thai nationals abroad, tonight we have a flight from the Republic of Korea which will arrive in Bangkok bringing back safely the second batch of Thai students uh, from the AFS and other exchange programs, uh, approximately 132 and this is flying in from the United States via the Republic of Korea. The third batch of 162 students will also arrive tomorrow, but in Utapau Airport, by special flight arranged by the Thai government. And we highlight this, the spokesperson highlighted this because it is the AFS student exchange uh, group. Uh, they are Frankly speaking, our children, our, our youth, and our future. So we take particularly good care of them. On the 19th of April, tomorrow, there will also be two incoming flights from Bangkok. 
from various countries in Europe, bringing back uh, 26 Thai nationals, in which the Thai embassies and consulates around Europe have joined, hand to, have joined hands to make arrangements for Thais being repatriated to fly in and assemble in Amsterdam and fly out together from Europe from one destination. The second flight for tomorrow will arrive from Bahrain with 75 Thai nationals. And of course, all of these returnees will be quarantined, uh, mandatory quarantine for 14 days in the state quarantine process. In the return of all these Thai nationals, we, of course, I present every day the work of the Royal Thai Embassies and the consulates around the world who have worked around the clock to facilitate the nationals abroad who need to return to Thailand and to provide assistance to those who live far from their homeland. I'm sure that you know that other countries around the world are also doing this for their citizens. And up on screen you have a slide, some images of this work. This is uh, Malaysia, the embassy and consulates in Malaysia taking care of our people there. These people, of course, are Thais around the world face numerous difficulties, some of whom have left Thailand for jobs and who have need uh, assistance uh, from, from the government. On screen now, you have some images uh, of the Thai embassy in Washington, D.C., as well as the consulates, the Thai, Royal Thai consulates in Los Angeles and in other uh, cities, uh, sending off the Thai exchange, exchange students uh, from the AFS and other programs back to Thailand. And as you know, uh, last night, one of these flights have arrived already. And of course, the care packages and yes, the Thai embassies and consulates so provide uh, the, these Thai citizens with support and of course moral support and reassure them that they have someone to rely on to help in times of hardship. Of course, as mentioned, Kwon Thai Mai Tinkan will leave no Thai person behind. Yes, so turning now to the general advice, and I'd like to cap off with uh, some messages that I can recap from what the Prime Minister mentioned again also. Uh, first, the general advice, as always, uh, wash your hands often. The spokesperson and the public health ministries, the government has, has been reminding the public quite, quite often, repeating this quite often, that uh, you should wash your hands often, wear masks, keep physical and social distance, in order to keep yourself, your family, and friends, and loved ones safe from COVID. We also have some short tips for today about cleaning your mobile phone because, of course, this is a device which is a life and death uh, device instrument in this day and age. Uh, we're in, this is like as important as a, an organ of the human body, so, so to speak, but sarcastically, of course. However, so it's important to clean mobile phones and tablets because they are frequently touched every single day and used close to your mouth and nose. So first, you can see the infographic here on screen. Wash your hands before cleaning the phone. Second, unplug and turn off the mobile phone. Third, if it is waterproof, wash it with soapy water and dry it with soft towel. If not waterproof, of course, you can mix uh, water and alcohol, maybe 60% water, 40% alcohol to produce a cleaning solution and use microfiber cloth to clean the phone and dry it later. Note that uh, you should also clean the mobile phone case. Of course, this is a detailed advice, but very important for this day and age. Yes. So in a time like this, where we have the COVID situation, staying at home and everything, um, it's also a time for reflection. So reminding us, of course, of the simple way of living. Earlier this week, the Prime Minister attended the ASEAN special ASEAN summit on COVID, as I had mentioned before. And he made a suggestion to the meeting about the Sufficiency Economy Philosophy, SEP, given uh, by His Majesty uh, King Puipon Adunide the Great, and could be applied as an alternative approach to sustainable development and strengthen the resilience, the resilience of the type of the people and self-immunity of the region as well. So it should be noted that SEP is not about only a strategy for the country's development, but also a compass for individual and community development. 
and it is, of course, also a new normal in this environment. The Prime Minister, aside from the ASEAN meeting last week, also had a public address yesterday, as I mentioned, yesterday at 6 p.m., and His Excellency the Prime Minister touched upon the importance of family and loved ones. He also said that in this time of crisis, he knows that this time of crisis, excuse me, this time of crisis knows no boundary and discrimination. And that all of us, be rich or poor or old or young, are affected by it. And he emphasized that eventually happiness could only be found by having friends, family, and loved ones around. Therefore, we ask you to keep up with your hygiene practices to prevent COVID as a way to show that you care about your loved ones. So please wear the mask and wear the heart. So please have a happy and restful Saturday. Thank you very much. Sawadee